Fighter, you ready? Combate Global! Oh, what a punch! What an incredible fight! Can you believe what you just saw? We have a champion! And there's the beautiful Miami skyline. That's right, that is December in South Florida. Tonight, the international city hosts an international tournament it's right here inside Univision Studios. That's right, Copa Combate is going down tonight. Jimmy Smith alongside Alex Wendling and, of course, Rodolfo Roman. Now, it isn't just Copa Combate tonight. They have some preliminary fights, and one thing that has always happened in La Jaula, especially in 2023, every time last week, no exception, the ladies bring it. Every single time in La Jaula, that is exactly what is happening in our preliminary fight. And that's right, it is going down, and also with Copa Combate, everybody wants to raise the bar. You want to have all the action you can leading into the tournament. Elizabeth Mogollan versus Nick Dali Rivera. Gonna be a great one. It is going down. Let's bring him in. Entering the howl. Elizabeth Mogollan. And you see her making her walk. That's right, Elizabeth Mogorian. That's right, when she talks about her motivation to train, she started out by taking care of fighters in her chiropractic business. Now, I don't know why someone would try and put together my spine and then fight. I think you'd never want to fight again, but that's what she started. That's what got her into the sport. Ain't it crazy? And she just I just talked to her not long ago, and she said, look, I, I had to put that aside. I really want to concentrate on my MMA career. It was taken away from my time to really refining what I need to work on and be that MMA fighter that I want. So she's coming off a victory of Diana Sanchez, and that is what wants to keep that momentum going against a seasoned veteran of Nigdali Rivera. Now, she was part of her national kickboxing team. When you have that great kickboxing background, Alex, what do you want to see opening in a fight like this? I mean, I want to see her coming out hot, just going for it, go for broke, and really put the pressure on Nick Daly, who hasn't fought in quite a bit. So if she can really shock Nick Daly, she could get some good shots in there and really throw her off. Well, let's see if Nick Dali is ready. Beatrice, bring her in. Her opponent, Nick Dali Rivera. And there's Nick Dali Rivera. As you said, Alex, hasn't fought in five years. She's been training since she was 18 years old. So she has the, the, the years underneath her, but that break, that time off. We talked about the, the start right, of Mogollan, how you want to see her come out. A lot of times you have ring rust, it takes a second to get in there. When you look at Rivera, what do you want to see in the first few minutes after all that time off? I want to see her use some of that 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu skill. She's a purple belt. We could see some good game off her back as well, but she, for the most part, is going to try to play what is her game and try to figure out where Elizabeth takes the fight and really capitalize on moments for her. Rodolfo, she's out of Extreme Couture, great camp, very well-rounded. What are your thoughts on uh, her chances tonight in the Haula? Yeah, training with guys at the Extreme Couture just defines you as a great fighter. And Igdali has been hungry to get inside La Haula. She set aside that time. She said, I need to focus on myself, get something going for my life, aside from mixed martial arts. But I want to get back to it. And she wanted to really fine-tune those areas where she needed to get better at. And here she is in Lala. Once again, she's hungry for that W. And here's our head-to-head. -head. Almost the exact same age, slight height advantage for Rivera. Also a slight reach advantage. Both of them weighed under 110 for this fight. We are set, ready to go at 110 pounds. Beatrice, get us started. And we continue with much more action this bout. At a cash weight of 110 pounds, continuamos con mucha más acción este duelo. A un peso pactado de 110 libras, los jueces son the judges are. Richard Green Sr., Richard Green Jr., and Lorenzo Toledo. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, 
Llegó el momento de un... ¡Combate global! In the blue corner, la esquina azul, vestida de negro, wearing black. Su peso oficial, 109.6 libras, her official weight, 109.6 pounds, con un record profesional de una victoria y cuatro derrotas, with a pro record of one victory and four losses. Fighting out of Mexico City, Mexico, Elizabeth Moyan! Her opponent on the red corner, su oponente en la esquina roja, wearing red, vestida de rojo. Su peso oficial, 109.8 libras, her official weight, 109.8 pounds, con un record profesional de nueve victorias y diez derrotas, with a pro record of nine victories and ten losses. De Chihuahua, Mexico, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Nitali Rivera! Isaac Cabal. Fighters, bring it in. Okay, we talked about the rules in the back. If you have any questions, obey my instructions. Touch gloves if you want. Good luck. Catch your point. Doors closed. Doors closed. And we are ready to get underway. Nick Dali Rivera in the red. Judge Elizabeth ready. Mogollan Judge in ready. the black. Judge ready. Time ready. Fighter, are you ready? Fighter, are you ready? Fight. And here we go, round number one. We talk about that 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu, guys. Nick Daly definitely wants to display that here tonight. That's her bread and butter. And for Elizabeth, you know, she's coming off that victory. That momentum is there. She wants to keep at it, continue on getting other wins to really secure and notify herself that, hey, I belong in La Jala. I am a mixed martial artist, and I'm evolving every single time. Yeah, Rivera putting a lot of physical pressure already. You said it, Alex. You know, how do you start? We've had a lot of time off. Rivera not waiting for the cobwebs, huh? Yeah, she's taking control of La Jaula, and really, Elizabeth is having to fight her off with those kicks. But the distance management so far, I'm pretty impressed by. Mogollan in the black kickboxing background, national team in Mexico. Rivera, we talked about the ground system, 10th planet. What does that mean? A lot of rubber guard, a lot of funk, a lot of unorthodox sweeps and positions. And definitely a style of jiu-jitsu that is meant for MMA. Everything, every type of controlled position, you want to also be able to get some hits in. So that's why the 10th Planet system is so good. You spend all your time in no gi, even though the gi can help every now and then, I get it. But uh, 10th Planet jiu-jitsu really could come into play tonight. By the way, she looked right at the Carlson Gracie guy when she said that. She goes, <laughs> you know, I understand the gi, it's a good thing. Make an eye contact with me, all right, Carlson Gracie, I understand it. Anyway, right now, Rivera taking the middle. Mogollan waiting for her opportunity opportunities on the outside. Yeah, very similar to her previous fights. Liz really likes to time her shots. Not a lot of pressure coming on her, and she'll do a lot of pack pedaling, but the last time that she got inside La Jala was a knockout victory in the third round. So something that I would like to see is here, put her foot on the accelerator and let it go. And Mogollan right now content to play the outside. Rivera leading the dance in the center of La Jala. Those inside kicks starting to add up. Yeah, for Nick Daly, guys, it's been some time since she stepped in. The butterflies are roaming everywhere right now. The pressure, the nerves are kicking in. It's like almost restarting your career, despite the fact you've had 20 fights. And Mogollan, though, as you said, putting money in the bank, going after the leg kicks. Leg kick, body work, starts, start feeling it second and third round. It just stings in round number one. You start slowing down rounds two and three. All right now, Mogollan confident, though, on the outside, good head movement. I'm sure Nick Daly eats a lot of those kicks, too, training at Extreme Couture. People do not take it easy there, her sparring partners. And they have a really great girls team. So she's training with some of the most elite females in the country. And she's really getting to showcase it now. Hopefully, she can bring the pace up a little bit more. Yeah, it makes a difference with people that you train with, right? You are who you are, depending on who you train with and hang around with. You Misha Tate's right, all those type of girls that have been in the game for some time, they teach you those things. And Nick Dowling, there's no doubt, she comes in with all that, that knowledge in this fight. Say in MMA and combat sports, period. You never want to see something for the first time in the actual cage. You want to see it for the first time in training so you can react to a good left hook over the top. 
And, and that's the thing about Liz. Every time she exchanges and she'll feel and she'll get hit, she'll back away instead of letting the hands go. Sometimes you're going to get hit, hit once or twice, but you got to let them go. And Nicdali Rivera talked about her ground skills. Alex, no attempt at a takedown. Seems, com seems comfortable to stand and strike. Yeah, I definitely think being the aggressor and really being able to put Elizabeth against the cage might be part of her strategy here. She's definitely letting it fly, and Elizabeth is able to get a nice punch right there. Starting to land, starting to fire it up. Yeah, look at that left hand hanging in there. I went up on one minute left in round number one. Nick Dali Rivera in the red, Elizabeth Mogoyan in the black. Kickbox from Mexico on your left. Grappler on your right, Dali Rivera. There are no specialists. You can see that both ladies know what they do, know what they're doing. And we're starting to see a little bit of switch stances from Elizabeth. Tell me, Rodolfo, what are some of the openings you get when you have an orthodox going against someone with a switch stance? Yeah. <laughs> That's the most confusing part of them on. It's so hard when you train, Jim. You and yeah. I know that stuff. So it's just really a matter of adjusting and your footwork and following through, and, and really not just take off course in your stance, right? Because it's a matter of just really keeping to your strategy, your technique, and follow through. And, and some good advice Dominic Cruz gave me one time. He said, when fighters switch stances, their defense goes out for a second. Yep. Yeah, they yep. can attack from that side, but they can't defend from that side. When they switch, attack them immediately. Keep the physical pressure on them. And right now, so far, Rivera doing that with the physical pressure, but some good counter punching. But she keeps backpedaling at the same time, guys. Interesting right round number fly. one. Both ladies firing to the bell to end round number one. Great stuff. Estás trabajando bien, pero estás trabajando muy pausado. No te necesito más tu activa. Lo mismo que estás haciendo más continuo. No, te estoy diciendo que le metas la calf por fuera. Esta está muy cerca y la tienes a distancia. La vas a abrir. No, si la estás abriendo por dentro, por, por fuera es más fácil. ¿sí? Entiéndela más. Ella va a venir. Tú sala y jales 45 con el gancho. Más if she starts throwing and you want to, body lock her, uh. either day. Corners out. Corners out. Yeah, more, more, more. Go back, corners out. Door close. Door close. Second round, fighter ready? Fighter ready, back up a little bit. Welcome back to Combate Global. It is Nick Dali Rivera in the red on your right versus Elizabeth Mogoyan in the black on your left, 110 pounds. Great round number one. Mogoyan landing some good strikes, some good counters, but backpedaling a lot. To your point, Rodolfo, we have open scoring. We will know the scores in the minute. In a minute, where are you leaning right now? Yeah, and, and in between rounds, uh, Mogoyan's corner, to the, you're, you're working too slow here. You have to be more offensive. You have to let them go. And that's something that she needs to do. She needs to put pace. Nick Daly's doing everything she needs to do to win this fight. Haven't seen any of that groundwork, but she feels very confident in the striking. Yeah, Nick Daly's corner says, if she gets too close to you, body lock and take her down. So we will hopefully see some of that ground game from her. But as of right now, we're getting a Mexican-Mexican classic, both trying to walk each other down and see what they can do on the feet. And let me tell you, Jimmy, you and I know this. When you fight an opponent, right, that you're coming to the dance and you're ready to party, and you're not giving anything, it's really frustrating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's very, very true. And what uh, uh, Rivera has done so well throughout this fight is she's controlled the real estate, right? right? She's made Mogollon fight in, in, in a small howla, right? Fighting with a, just the edge. And that's affected a little bit of her footwork in this fight. And in opposite stances as they have been throughout this fight. A lot of stance switches from both of these ladies. We just saw one right there. Yeah, you can yeah. see though, Nick Dallas, he's trying to find that opening to take her down. He's finding the right moment, that right timing. Yeah, when Elizabeth, she switches, keep those fingers up for me. When she switches to the southpaw, you definitely get a nice body kick right there. So far, no commitment to the takedown from either fighter. No attempted shots, no real drop of the hips. 
both fighters seem content to stand and bang. And a lot of times when that happens is both fighters are having enough success that they think they're winning. Nobody thinks they're losing yet. And that first real attempt at a clinch from Rivera. Yeah, you, you, it's just that jumping. That's, uh, it, I'm telling you, as a fighter, it's really, uh. <laughs> <laughs> the frustration yeah. on the face of Rodolfo <laughs> Roman. So have an intense fight in La Hala halfway through round number one in what has been a very competitive fight. Sorry, right, right, we're in round number two, a competitive round right number one, a little bit of a foul there. All right, sir, over here for him. Come over here. Okay. Hey, you got five minutes. Okay, take yes, your time. Sir. Round number two, no real, right. no, okay. no real game changes so Guys, far. Has that surprised you a little bit, Alex? Nobody's really right. shifted, uh, right. flipped the script. Right. Right. Well, sometimes right. we'll see, Connor. you know, it takes some time to really get things going, really get the significant punches in. But there we go, Nick Daly starting to lay it on her and really close the distance. Mogollon, of course, on the national team in kickboxing in Mexico, confident with her striking, but hasn't been able to really back Rivera up, hasn't landed that big shot to let her know that she's the superior kickboxer. Both land, both have landed good punches. No one's been staggered. No one's really been backed up by one single shot. And Dally, though, you can see she's trying to work several levels of the body from the top to the bottom with that jab. And you know, Nick Dally, she's doing a good job at attacking those legs every time she switches, which is great. You know, you got two legs, right? And when you're that type of fighter, the switch of stance just really throws you off course. Still finding success with that left hook. Right hand right behind it for Rivera. What, what's interesting is, guys, that when there's exchange, none of them pull the trigger on trying to take the fight to the ground. And, and the, the holes are rare, right? The openings and the opportunities are there. Both fighters just letting it fly on the feet. Combination after combination. Fans here at Univision Studios getting their money money's worth from this one. And Nick Daly hasn't fought in five years. It seems like she's just having too much fun on the feet right now. Yeah, it's, she seems to be enjoying it. To your point, you wondered if she would get this in her wheelhouse on the ground. Hasn't had any um, hasn't had any impetus to really do that yet. Content to stand and bang. That five-year layoff too it just makes you appreciate more, right? Of what you've missed and what you love changes everything. And honestly, it's really important for some of these fighters to brand themselves as an exciting fighter. And sometimes you don't get that credit when you know the jujitsu fans aren't out there watching you. So if she's willing to make it work on the feet, hey, hats off to her. She's doing it so far. We talked about her 10th Planet credentials. Woo, none of that nice. grammar. Nice. There we go. Right hand over the top. For Nick Daly Rivera, the kickboxer, Elizabeth Mogollon, taken back a little bit. Maybe she was expecting a different kind of fight tonight. Nick Daly is not holding back. She got the memo, mucho mas acción. He's fighting like she belongs in combate. Keeping those fists going, Ooh. aggressive from the outset. Nothing different with 10 seconds left to go in round number two. No surprise, they are banging go. to the bell. The last round for her, for some reason, the first round. I don't know why. The first round is The her? first round they gave and her. And the second? No, they haven't done the second yet. But they gave Fuck. her, yeah. Free. But I want you to know that for some reason, they're, they're fucking drunk, all right? So. You need to just keep doing just what you did there. That pressure this is right the third there. Round. This is the third round. All right. Deep breaths. She needs my so, level changing and overhand is working. She's okay. probably going to look to try to shoot at some point this round, but that's just to try to seal this. So, just be ready for that. Okay. All right? But keep doing what you're doing. All right? Okay. Breathe for me. Fight a beautiful fight, regardless. You won the first round. Third round, right? Fighter, third round. 
Welcome back to round number three. Elizabeth Mogollan versus Nikdali Rivera. Rivera in the red, Mogollan in the black. In between rounds, Rivera's corner told her they gave your opponent round number one. She seemed surprised. They seemed surprised, but a little bit dejected. Breathing very heavily in between rounds for Rivera. What are your thoughts on it, Alex? I mean, she has the motivation. Look at these punches. They're coming. They're flying. Haymakers. The overhand is working for her, so that's something that she's going to try to utilize in this fight. Final round. Oh, man. It, can, it can be so disheartening, uh, Rodolfo, when you hear, like, I thought I won round number one, and no, you didn't. We have open scoring here, so they know she's got to be thinking, what else do I need to do? And, 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 that, and that's her husband, right? I mean, these, this young lady breathes, eats MMA, her significant other is also a mixed martial artist, and when you have someone like that telling you, hey, you need to pick up the pace, you know, they're telling you the honest truth. But what I did like from Liz last time around, she did pick up the pace. She was throwing and exchanging with McDolly. I think McDolly is doing enough to get the judges nod the way she's walking Elizabeth down. So she just needs to keep up that pace, not being afraid to get in the pocket and let it fly. Dude, the takedown might ice some of these close rounds. Now she feels she's behind. I believe you have the, the uh, superior ground game. Take her down, get this one down, and kind of ice this round. Her corner said, keep doing what you're doing. No First, advice about changing level and going for the takedown. First time we see some clinch work between these two ladies. And we're Logo seeing Jan some... reaching for the single leg. And McDally not going in for it. Fighting off, good way with the wizard. And great head Hooks. position as well. Really keeping her up against the cage. Physical pressure from Mogollan. Just a circle off La Haula. Try and take her down. Not willing to commit to that. She is once again the aggressor. That's the good news that she's keeping Rivera up against La Jaula. Rivera able to circle out. And for Liz, that was a good strategy because you do end up picking, stopping that pace of Nigdali. Now this is where Nigdali wants to fight, where she's able to throw them hands and exchange. What a reversal. We thought going in that Mogollan, the kickboxer, would be dominant on the feet. Rivera would look for the takedown. It's been Rivera comfortable to box, especially with that right hand over the top. Only takedown attempt was from Mogollan. I don't know about you guys, but Nikdali came here to win, and so far she's doing what she needs to do. She's hungry. Halfway through round number three, we know her opponent, Elizabeth Mogollan, got round number one. We do not know about round number two yet. This is all up in the air. And Nick Dowley's still walking her down, but in those moments, she's sometimes letting her guard down. So I'm wondering, is Elizabeth going to capitalize on some of those holes she's opening? Right, that is a little bit of the fatigue, guys. But hey, give her credit, right? She's been out for five years. Exactly. Fantastic job. She's glanced up at the clock. But she's keeping the pressure on Elizabeth Mogollan. With that Mogollan. tenacity, guys, that heart, she's willing to take anything and do anything to get that W. Mogollan so far has not had an answer for that overhand right. And they're from the beginning. Got it, just hunting her prey. Nice knee, but Nigali Rivera answering back with the right hand. In this third round is the first round where we're seeing some knees being thrown. And that'll take yes. the wind out of you, and that'll really put your strength into, into question. It'll test everything. How much heart you got in round number three? Well, eat a couple knees, and you get to find <laughs> out. See how you feel. Coming up on a minute left in a very competitive fight, round number three. Don't know how the judges saw round number two. They saw round number one for Elizabeth Mogollan. Yeah, but just to big up what Alex said, Nick Daly, you know, it could be the fatigue, could be the cardio coming down, but she is leaving herself open with those hands down when she throws. And Liz not capitalizing on that. That jab, man, it's been very effective for Nick Daly. Yeah, it really reminds me of a special someone, Juliana Pena, when she was walking walking down Amanda Nunes and shoving oh, no, that down no. the clown's mouth. Constant that attack one, with yep. that lead hand, yep. Nice, nice. right hand afterward. Ooh, She's trying height. to finish strong, under 30 seconds left to go in round number three. Jabs from Mogollan, but Rodolfo, you called it in the beginning. A little too much backpedaling. She's counterfighting well, but moving back at the same time. How will the judges see it? Who will put their stamp on this third and final round? 
You heard the 10 second clapper? To the bell. There is wow, the final bell. What a fight between, between these two ladies at 110 pounds. One question left. Who did the judges give it to? We'll answer that question when we come back. Welcome back inside La Hala. It was a hard fought 15 minutes. Elizabeth Mogoyan on your left. Nick Dali Rivera on your right. Who won this battle at 110 pounds? Elizabeth. Después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, esta es la decisión oficial. After three rounds of much more action, this is the final decision. Pues Richard Green Sr. anota 29 to 28 in favor of Rivera. Green Jr. anota 30 to 27. And Lorenzo Toledo, 29 to 28. And the winner, by way of split decision, el ganador, la ganadora, por decisión dividida, Nick Daly Rivera! There is happiness, and then there is elation. We are looking at elation right now on the face of Nick Daly Rivera. Hard fought win for her, five years off. And doing a little dance to cap it off, well deserved. Congratulations to Nick Dowling. Yeah, I too would be dancing off like that. The five years hiatus, I get this victory. Just, just everything here with those heavy, hard hits, with her jab, the right hand. She definitely wanted this fight. But Elizabeth was just pat pedaling all the time. Wasn't answering back, Alex. And we talked about the fact that she does have that jujitsu ground game, but really wasn't needed in this fight. Yeah, she didn't need it, and I feel bad, Elizabeth. She has been on the wrong side of a few close decisions, but again, if she was one to press forward a little bit more, I think it could have gone her way, because she was landing too. Yeah, it was a split decision victory, but I must say, it just verifies the fact that she belongs in La Jaula. Congratulations, young lady. And look at the punches for Nidali Rivera. It was a wipeout when it came to the punches. Great stuff from Rivera. We will see her again very soon in La Jala. More to come when we come back to Combate Global. Get used to it tonight. There's not going to be any break in the action. That's right. Ryan Ocasio versus Santiago Monreal. The standout wrestler and the excellent striker. Bring them in, Omar. We're ready to go. Ryan Ocasio! See the American Ryan Ocasio. U.S. flag draped around his shoulders, wrestled in college, not just anywhere, at the Citadel. That is a tough place to do just about anything, wrestling included. State champion twice in New York. He followed Follow wrestling, very tough wrestling state. He won it twice. You know, a lot of fighters talk about what's your favorite move. He said flying crescent kick to the spleen. I don't know if that's true, but that's what he said. That's very detailed. And when you have such a high status of wrestling and then you add in a little bit of jujitsu, which just some, even as a blue belt, that could add some dangerous context. His opponent has to be ready to go. Let's bring him in, Omar, whenever you're ready. Y ahora su oponente, Santiago Monreal. Santiago Monreal trains out of Mexicali, Mexico. Level up strength and conditioning. This was a guy with an extensive amateur career. He won three titles, three different amateur promotions, blue belt in jiu-jitsu, but really talks about his striking ability, what he can do on the feet. Rodolfo, so many fighters out of Mexico. Now, used to be boxing country, great kickboxers, really well-rounded mixed martial artists now coming out of Mexico. This dude, keep an eye, he's so quick, he's so fast. But that takedown defense is what I'm gonna be the key here to stop Ocasio but just great striking, precise timing is on point and really a pressured fighter. He's had several fights in a combate global, so he's very familiar with La Jaula. Looking forward to seeing this young man in action again. Well, let's look at the physical differences. Same height, both guys five foot five, 22 years old for Ryan Ocasio. Eight years older is Santiago Monreal. 
equal reach advantage. What are they doing in the howler? Sí, ya estamos listos para este combate pautado a tres asaltos de cinco minutos en la división peso mosca. We are ready for this bout set to three rounds of five minutes in the flyweight division. Los jueces son, the judges are Richard Green, Vicente Rodríguez y Eliseo Rodríguez. Damas y caballeros, el momento ha llegado para un combate global. Presentando en la esquina azul, introducing in the blue corner. Sube a la jaula con un récord invicto de tres victorias. He stepped in into the cage with a record undefeated of three victories. Wearing blue and white, vistiendo azul y blanco. Registró un peso oficial de 125.8 libras. He registered at a weight of 125.8 pounds. De Sunrise, Florida, Ryan Ocasio. Su oponente en la esquina roja. Now introducing the red corner. Sube a la jaula con seis victorias, cuatro derrotas. He steps into la jaula with six victories, four losses. Vistiendo rojo, he's wearing red. Pesó oficialmente 126 libras. He registered at a weight of 126 pounds. De Mexicali, México, Santiago Monreal. El referee para este combate, Chris Minioki. All right, gentlemen, bring it in, please. All right, let's have a good, clean fight. Please listen to my commands at all times and protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Good luck to both of you. That's right, it's the wrestler from the Citadel, Ryan Ocasio in the blue, Santiago Monreal in the red. Undefeated 3 and 0. Is Ocasio 22 years old? The young buck bringing confidence tonight. That's the start of round number one. Yeah, Ryan Ocasio training with the Wolf Pack, Roger Craw, phenomenal coach. Very familiarized in Florida, Jimmy. Yeah, great yeah. team out of there, fantastic, well-rounded. Ocasio starting out banging. Santiago's precise boxing, very sharp, could be the key as long as you stay away from that wrestling from Ocasio. Yes. Santiago representing Mexicali, Puro Chicali Rodolfo. He has a lot of weight on <laughs> the back, gets dropped there, but a nice up kick. Yeah, good job, Ocasio now on top. Butterfly guard. See what the Jiu Jitsu blue belt can do. Thinking about the sweep. You know, butterfly guard, a sweeper's guard. It's going to keep the physical pressure off of you. Good job from Ocasio getting it to the howla early. We've seen some phenomenal flyweight action in La Jaula this year, Jimmy and Alex. I mean, phenomenal. And they're so well-rounded. We're so used to seeing back then, right? Oh, then we'll go three-rounders. No, we're getting finishers now, which is awesome. Guillotine position right now from Monreal. Caught the head of Ryan Ocasio on the outside, but Ocasio now looks like he's defending well. Let's see here if he switches to a high elbow, a little bit more secure versus the grip that he has now. And yeah, that's one thing for wrestlers, right? They're easily caught in these positions. That's how they start to keep that chin down. If he's not careful, he could get Von Flute here. Yep. Not letting go of the head. Big rookie mistake. The blue belts do that, though. <laughs> you know, just a blue belt in jujitsu, hanging onto the head a little too long, but good pass from Ocasio. Now the wrestlers ride. Santiago not wanting to give up his back, but he had almost no other choice there. He's really looking to work up the cage and not let him get both hooks in. Now we saw him fight before. You know, uh, the two ladies kind of, uh, Rivera kind of staying away from her specialty, going to the kickboxing. Ocasio is not making that mistake. I'm the better wrestler. I'm gonna do this all night. Double leg, takedown, slam. 
D1 wrestler. He knows where his bread is buttered. He's going to stay there. Yeah, good way of positioning his head, getting it out of any deep waters, getting caught in another guillotine. And that's the thing about these wrestlers is when they're on top of you, you really feel it everywhere, on the chest, on your neck. They're going to be giving you that D1 wrestling experience from the start. So hopefully we can see some uh, side control escapes from Santiago, but again, it's tough when you're going up against a wrestler with a lot of pressure. Nice Moving transition to full mount. All the way on top and Monreal trying to hook the head and dump him, but not to be is Ogasio doing a good job, not just staying on top, but very clever passing. Good step over from the butterfly guard. Both hooks in. Maybe the passing might pull it off, guys. Looking for the rear naked, both hooks in. Just fished for it, didn't try too hard for it. Now he has his man flattened out. In this position, he has the potential to let down some ground and pound. We'll see if he does that or if he prefers to just really keep control. Yeah, his previous fights, two by decision, one by punches or technical knockout. Ocasio right now controlling this on the ground. A minute 20 left in round number one. There's Santiago Molinial. It's one of those things we're like, oh, I'll, just, I'll just see the end of round number one. I'll consider that a moral victory at this point, because so far, round number one belonging to Ryan Ocasio. And of course, Santiago is more worried about protecting his neck. Great explosion to escape Great though. Stuff, yeah. The transition though from Ocasio, staying on top. Is not letting go, and you get those wrestlers, as Alex stated, there's just no way of getting out of them. They will drain you. Now on top, Santiago Monreal, 45 seconds left to go in round number one. Ocasio on his back for the first time. You can see that hip mobility there, trying to work up his back. We'll see if he'll be able to get anything here off of his back. That's right, you see those knees working up under your armpits. You know, you have an aggressive guard under you. It's right now what Ocasio's working for. He's in, been in control so far in round number one. All he has to do is survive for another 20 seconds. Should be 10-9 for Ocasio, but still staying cautious, staying defensive with 15 seconds left. Yeah, I'm going to go landing some shots from... Good physical pressure to the end for Monreal. Couple deep breaths. Give me another one. And one more. And a bonus. Did you wind up on the bottom? You up on the bottom got a Mistake. little high. Yeah, you okay. got a little bit high. Yeah, don't get high. Take your time. How do you feel? Okay. Fresh hold okay. Give me another deep breath. Listen to me. One more. Now listen. Listen. That high goes there. Relax yourself. That high goes there all fucking day. You hear me? That's it. Just relax with it and bring the right hand sharp. And that. Just relax that right hand. Come with that yeah, angle. You're hitting, you're hitting with everything, dude. Right? right. Just with on everything. the ground. Control position first. Control right. Position. Eye in the back. Oh, right. Beautiful job. Save it. Right back to and touch him up and down. Let's go. Right back to it. Welcome back inside La Hala. Ryan Ocasio versus Santiago Monreal. Ryan Ocasio in the blue, Santiago Monreal in the red. You know it's going well, Rodolfo, when your corner in between rounds says, keep doing what you're doing. That was Ryan Ocasio's advice in the corner that he got from his corner man. You can't go wrong when Roger Craw is telling you congratulations, <laughs> right? And I mean, that's a man who taught some of the best in this sport of mixed martial arts. But that, ooh, kid looks phenomenal right now, guys. And he's just pretty oh. beautiful, just takedown from Ocasio. Right around the guard, landing inside control. There's an expression about not, not counting chickens until they're hatched, right? So Ocasio has to keep, you know, mentally strong. 22 years old, you can get ahead of yourself a little bit. 100%, and I mean, the way he's dominantly able to get these takedowns is so impressive. He must be feeling pretty good on top here. And it's, it's all about timing precision with those takedowns, right? You gotta know what are these, maybe feints, throw some shots, fake it out, and it goes down for those takedowns. And, and it's not just the wrestling that he's doing. He's peppering in some, some, some shots, shots that, yeah. there, too, that are distracting. It's obviously taken Santiago uh, some time to adjust to his style. 
And also, even here in this position, just so patient, right? Making sure that his head position is right. Any of his hand just pushes him away. Stepping over into what they call now is this mermaid position, trying to trap both legs together. Didn't get it, went back the other direction. Good control on the hips. You can see Santiago trying to dig in for the neck here. Yeah, fishing for the guillotine. Yeah, see, a, he tried to do it in the first yeah. two, guys. Had an opportunity in round number one, but I want to say no guard, no guillotine. If your hips aren't behind it, it's no good. Now standing up. Uh, big mistake. Nice double leg, but ending up in guillotine again around the legs. So Beautiful instinctive job. to get to the side and not yeah. get stuck in that guillotine choke. I, I imagine that he's been attempted to be guillotined many times as a wrestler. So smooth he makes it look. To this wrestling ride position, Parterre so good at that so far. Oh, and in that first round, guys, he was also looking for a rear naked choke. Maybe this may be it for him. One hook in, hunting for it. Trying oh, to get the rear the naked. Can't see from here if it is under the chin, but a lot of pressure from Ryan Ocasio. Can't see if he has that body lock. Body triangle as well, but that looks tight if it's under the chin. And has both hooks in for sure. Then. Don't know the chin and at the top. He gets to the top. Beautiful finish from Ryan Ocasio. Both hooks in. This was a master's class on the ground. 4-0, guys. Beautiful submission win for the kid who wrestled at Citadel and just have a takedown. Submission as well. Beautiful stuff. We'll make it official when we come back to Combate Global. Después de dos minutos, 34 segundos del segundo asalto, after two minutes and 34 seconds of the second round, the referee, Chris Mignocchi, stops the fight and sets the winner by submission. Y declara el ganador por su misión, Ryan Ocasio. He just said it with his hands, four and oh, man. Must feel good. Dominant performance for Ryan Ocasio. Dominant performance, and it's got to feel pretty good considering he's from South Florida. A lot of the crowd tonight is in his favor. Look at them cheer him on. It's got to feel pretty nice. Oh, that energy it was there from start to finish. Santiago Monreal, no answer for that physical pressure, Rodolfo. It was just non-stop laying on him. It was like a shark smelling blood, it just hounding his opponent, and he was Sure, he was gonna get that rear naked choke submission. He attempted in the first, he had to be a little patient until he got to the second, but just excellent ground game, Alex. Just phenomenal, no way of stopping this guy. Flyweights are definitely so much fun. Yeah, talk about finishing ability in the 125 pound division. Other flyweights on notice for this young man. We'll see him back in the house soon, but there's more to come. That's right, the tournament when we come back. Welcome inside Univision Studios, Jimmy Smith, Alex Wendley, and of course, Rodolfo Roman. You know what I love? Not just this tournament kicking off the quarterfinal round, but also Alex said that strikers might have a bit of an advantage. Okay, Rodolfo said, I don't know, maybe the grapplers. wrestlers. Well, what do we have right now? Striker versus grapplers So the pride of my two fellow commentators on the line, a real contrast in styles. Explain it to us, Rodolfo Roman, the first, the quarterfinal rounds, how is it working time-wise? What are these two fighters gonna face? You got two five-minute rounds, then you got the semifinals at one five-minute round, and the finals being three five-minute rounds. is all or nothing. You gotta go kill or be killed to really conserve that energy as you proceed into the next round very effective. However, if you're that wrestler, you have that endurance, you have that cardio, and you might not be able to take too many shots because you're dragging on, sticking on to your opponent. It's all strategical, man. It's almost like being a manager in a baseball team, right? When to put the designated hitter, that batter that's going to be that home run guy is very strategic, like a chess game, like a, like a game of battleship. Now, Alex, you're back in the home run hitters. The strikers <laughs> that go in there and get it done early. We're going to have one of those in the fight that's about to start. Yes, it's going to be very exciting. Ramiro Jimenez is one of the most exciting uh, fighters on this card in the roster in general. So it's going to be an exciting one. And, and you see the bracket here at the top left. Ramiro Jimenez, Pablo Burgos, one of four fights taking place in the quarterfinals tonight. As Rodolfo said, it is two rounds, 
five minutes apiece. Slow starters. This is not the format for you. And then you have a semifinal final. The winner is Copa Combate champion Ramiro Jimenez, the devastating striker. Great finisher. Six finishes in the first round. Pablo Burgos, the stocky striker. Beatrice, get us started. Entrando a la jaula, Ramiro Jimenez. Did we say something about quick finishers? Because this is your guy. Seven wins, six in the first round. Coming off a flying knee win over at Nicolas Berna, who's also on this card. This is one of those guys that comes out southpaw, very, very tricky, but line him up, he can knock him down. Yeah, Ramiro Jimenez is a special fighter who told me in the beginning of the year, he wrote on his vision board that he wanted to win a Copa Combate tournament, and the universe seems to be aligning in his favor because he had another fight, but he couldn't make it because of a rib injury. But now, it's because of that rib injury, he's able to compete in the Copa Combate for 100K. As he stalks around the howler, ready to kick it off. Opening round so important. Beatrice bringing his opponent. Su oponente, Pablo Burgos. There is Pablo Burgos. When we were talking about him earlier, Rodolfo, we talked about, you know, it's it's almost there are helicopters, right? And there are tanks. This guy is definitely in that tank category of grappler. Great grappling, great wrestling, but don't count him out with his striking. He's been training at the Young Tigers Foundation with Eric El Tigre Castillo, who happened to be one of my coaches. So he's been teaching him those angles, those striking positions, so he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the flashiness of Ramiro Jimenez. But of course, that wrestling could put the barricade or be that barricade to Jimenez's striking and flashy movements and could potentially take this first round of the Copa Combate. Now, sweet it would be for Chile to get his first Copa Combate. Five and two as a professional. Estaki, 145 pounds. Trying to get in there, be aggressive. You don't want to take damage in the opening round. It's a tightrope that all these fighters are going to have to walk. Let's take a look at the head-to-head. -head. Only two years older is Pablo Burgos, 26 years old. Look at the height advantage for Ramiro Jimenez. Also a four-inch reach advantage. That could be significant. We're ready to go. Welcome to Copa Combate. Bienvenidos a Copa Combate esta noche. Continuamos con mucha más acción con un premio especial tonight. We continue with much more action with a special prize. Dos vueltas de cinco minutos, tres jueces, utilizando el sistema de 10 puntos. Este duelo en la división peso ligero de Sbao. In the lightweight division, los jueces son de George Sar. Eliseo Rodríguez, Vicente Rodríguez, and Richard Green Sr. Y ahora... Damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Introducing the blue corner en la esquina azul, wearing black, vestido de negro. Su peso oficial, 144.6 libras, his official weight, 144.6 pounds. Esta noche, entra la jaula invicto como profesional con siete victorias tonight. He enters la jaula undefeated as a pro with seven victories. De sangre mexicana, va a Cali, Baja California, México. Ramiro, el cachanilla. Introducing the red corner, en la, esquina, en la esquina roja, wearing blue, vestido de azul. Su peso oficial, 145.2 libras, his official weight, 145.2 pounds, con un record profesional de cinco victorias y dos derrotas. With a pro record, five victories and two losses. De Santiago de Chile, Chile, Pablo, el depredador, Burgo. El referee, Raúl Borrata.
obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. Token guantes, regresen a sus esquinas. We are just about ready to get underway. Copa Combate. Ooh. Ramiro Jimenez in the Buckle black. Up. Pablo Burgos in the blue, and here we go. Oh, man, the nerves, guys. I'm telling you, it's so exciting. That quick finish, anyone can take it, but it's just an emotional roller coaster throughout the tourney. If they are half as excited as Rodolfo Roman, they got butterflies in there right now. Ooh. Look at Burgess following up. You know, Burgess told me that he's since he's been training with Tire Calstaño, he's been able to work on those angles, which is very, very important against Jimenez, who's known for that flashiness and striking that he has training out of the Go Chat Academy. Uh, that's a good way of stopping Jimenez, getting him in the clinch, stopping his flow, his movement. Oh! Did Stunned you see by that? that shot? Couldn't have missed it. Man. Whew. Beautiful right hand, guys. Now, right now, if you're Jimenez, Alex, you're just trying to clear your head here and get back in this fight. Yes, he's trying to knock off the cobwebs. I mean, Pablo Burgos has a 14-0 record in amateur kickboxing. We saw in his last fight he tried to wrestle, but now he's letting it fly, and it's working for him so far. You know, sometimes that's exactly what you need in a tournament. Come out there with a different strategy. Jimenez right now, the kickboxer, back on his heels. By the way, Jimenez is already bleeding from the nose. That really woke him up. It was a come-to-Jesus moment, guys. It either woke him up or put him to sleep. <laughs> that right hand was big. Pablo Burgos right now seeing everything go his way. Now, but see, this is when it gets interesting, right? Because now we're up to the two rounds. If it would have been that first round, Burgos could be able to put it in neutral. Oh, oh, no, right oh hand. man! This might be over soon. Drop for the second time in this fight. Jimenez hanging on. Wow. His undefeated record looks like it might slip away. This is interesting. That's why I said, despite whatever the paper says, don't go by it because anyone can win this tournament. Alex, how surprised are you by this? Burgos coming in, striking, using the grappling when necessary, but this has been a kickboxing match. Yeah, and this is definitely his biggest test so far. How can he handle it? How can he clear his head and really get back into this? Burgos not giving any space at all to Jimenez to get back in it. Looking for a mat return to get back to the back to the floor. Short uppercut again. Yeah, and the pocket laying in those uppercuts from Burgos. Man, he has some dynamite in those hands. And a reminder here, no open scoring. They will not know the score until the final bell. And I don't think that if there is, if there is a, right? a judge <laughs> necessary for this one. Uh, but he managed the firing back himself, guys. He said to be right back in the game. And I think right now it's big for Ramiro to at least survive this round. If he can get it going, great. But I think if taking that time to really gather things together and get it together would be smart because he's looking a little slow oh, with that uppercut. Nice oh. uppercut, a couple of them in a row. Yeah, he's been hearing what Christian Pools, the corner of man, is just giving him tips. He says fast, be fast. Alex, we thought this would be exciting, but this first oh fight God. is absolute fireworks. It's insane, and Ramiro generates oh. a lot of power from that left side. We'll see if he'll be able to get that. But guys, both these guys have been taking a lot of damage in this first oh, round. Oh. To his knees goes Burgos, looking for the single leg. What a comeback. Oh, this would be man. nice uppercut Ooh. again. Jimenez looking for the finish. Burgos struggling for the takedown. Man, and we're not even done with the first. This is insane. Minute 20 left in round number one. Big mistake, almost giving up his back. Guys, this is a lot of damage, though, that both these guys are taking in this opening round. Oh. One minute left in round number one. Can you believe what you're seeing Give in me this more. opening round? <laughs> wow. This is what it's all about. Copa Combate, $100,000 on the line, mucho más acción. If this is your first two time tuning in, bienvenidos. Unbelievable fight so far. We thought it was striker versus grappler. This has been a war from the opening bell. Man. Anything this could happen at this point. Both Fighting guys slinging bombs. 34 seconds left in round number one. Question now, if we do see a round number two, is who's going to have that gas to finish strong? Because both these fighters have left everything in La Jaula this in this first is, five minutes. This is absolutely insanity. 
in a tournament where you gotta oh. win three fights. These guys are fighting like this is a one round tournament. 10 seconds left in round number one. Can you believe both of these fighters are finishing round number one on their feet? Wow! Oh, Holy man. smokes! Give us a second to recover from what we just saw. Man, this is better than the alarm that wakes me up in the morning. Unbelievable. <laughs> Let's take it in here. Box him, box him. Keep boxing him. It's just the exchange, just in that right hand, guys. It's took down. He managed right down to the floor. And he was over position. Okay. Says, keep moving the head, head movement. Then do whatever you want. Okay. Throw in those hooks. It doesn't matter, we go to the next round. Throw in those hooks, okay? We're gonna win. Boxing and jab. Boxing and jab. And then is this corner wanting a little more technique, Alex, a little more head movement, a little more slickness from the kickboxer. Yeah, some slickness will definitely come into play. He looked a little bit slow in that round. He might have woken up. Same with Pablo, though. I mean, both of these guys are just... Start of round number two. It is unbelievable. We're seeing it. Pablo Burgos in the blue. Ramiro Jimenez in the black. And the fact that we're not getting that open scoring right to the end. That... Oh, the suspense. Man. That's what it's for, though, the suspense that we're all feeling. Oh, man. And to your point, Alex, about Jimenez, you know, kind of being shell-shocked, I think he may have expected a grappling match. Ooh. Suddenly gets hit with a big right hand, and it's a different fight. And you got to remember that Pablo Burgos' coach, Pablo Villaseca, has competed in a Copa Combate before. So he definitely had some wise words for him coming into this fight. Question might become who has the endurance, who has the grit to see it through to the end of round number two after round number one that I think both fighters thought this might be over soon. Yeah, Jimmy, I'm, I just want to, you know, the fact that Jimenez has Pujols in his corner, and if you recall what happened the last time that Pujols was in, in competition in La Jaula in that second round, his opponent's corner told him, box him, and that's exactly what he did and knocked him out with a jab. Could we be to see the same here from Jimenez? It looks like great job from that southpaw stance. The power left hand, Alex, right down the pipe. He's had success with it. Yes, he's starting to land it, and when he starts to land it, it comes in bunches. Not just singles. Look at the punches, almost identical, 13 to 14. Great sprawl. Wow. Let's see if he has any fret headlock game if he wants to go back to some stand-up. Yeah, Barga just threw in that desperate takedown. From Burgos right now in round number two, looking a little bit more worse for wear, a little bit more winded. Yeah, the pace has been slowed down. I mean, after that five minutes of insanity. I mean, who could keep I mean, that pace for <laughs> 10 minutes? Nobody on earth. One or two fighters could. Pablo needs to be very cautious here. You can see that energy definitely coming low. His hands are, his guard is a little bit weak. And Jimenez using that sharp boxing as his corner told him. A takedown from Jimenez. Gets ending up on top. This is where strategy comes into play. Exactly. Make your opponent carry your weight just a little bit. Jimenez. And this is a fight, guys. You don't want to leave it to the judges. You don't know what's going to happen. You have two rounds. That's it. Yeah, such a short fight. And once again, success from that power side for Ramiro Jimenez in the black, undefeated at 7 and 0. Oh. I think you nailed it when you said Pablo is looking a little bit more winded than Ramiro right now. We'll see if he's able to capitalize on those openings. Yeah, the you know, pace is there. If you're a wrestler, you can wrestle forever. If you're a kickboxer, you can kickbox forever. This has been mostly a kickboxing battle. Jimenez, more experienced with the kickboxing, seems a little bit more relaxed. Way more, especially to get to the latter part of the fight, and we're seeing it right here. Starting to see a little bit more head movement out of Jimenez as well. Now he definitely paid attention to what his corner told him. And two minutes left in an incredibly exciting fight. Campbell McLaren, El Jefe, sitting right by La Jaula, checking this all out. And this is what he means when he says, you go in there and you go to war, you're going to be back. That combate oh. global, this is what he meant. Can't make any mistakes. You saw Jimenez lose his footing, got down one to a knee. Luckily, he was able to recover, but Burgess could have caught him with a hook. 
Yeah, either one of these fighters, you know, one takedown could ice this thing. Only a minute and a half left, and it's Jimenez trying to work the body lock right now. Uh, it's at this point of the fight where they're both Jimenez sweaty and bloody. Jimenez gets that back around. That could probably be the difference unless Burgess gets up right here, does something real quickly, and he sure does. It's like he's listening to you, right? I guess so. <laughs> He's queued up, Jimmy. <laughs> we are back to the feet in an absolute war. One minute left in round number two. Ramiro Jimenez in the black, Pablo Burgos in the blue. Burgos almost getting a knockout in round number one. Jimenez paid him back, almost got a finish at the end of round number one. Round number two, though, has belonged mostly to Jimenez. Man, I don't want to be a judge right now. No, you don't. So glad I have this job. And don't leave your couch, because these last 20 seconds that are coming up is going to be insane. Oh, man. Short punches from Burgos, trying to finish with combinations. Bullying Jimenez up against La Jaula. They're going to go just all out right here, guys. Yep, 15 seconds left. Attempt at the takedown. 10 seconds left. Who will finish strong? Jimenez going double leg. Physical pressure, a man to the end. Oh my Both of these fighters. <laughs> Folks, this was the opening round fight. Can you believe it? Tension Somebody, in my blood palpable. <laughs> Who will get the decision? We are all at the edge of our seats. Join us right after this. Welcome inside La Jaula, a fight that has lived up to the hype of this entire tournament. And it's the first one of the first round. Ramiro Jimenez in the black, Pablo Burgos in the blue. Who won it? Don't hold us in suspense. After three rounds of much more action, two rounds of much more action, this is the final decision. Después de dos vueltas de mucha más acción, esta es la decisión oficial. Los jueces, Richard Green Sr. and Vicente Rodriguez turn in identical scorecards of 20 to 18. Y Eliseo Rodriguez entrega tarjeta de 19 a 19. Eliseo Rodriguez turn in a scorecard of 19 and 19. And the winner by majority decision, el ganador por decisión mayoritaria. Ramiro! Jimenez! An unbelievable fight, majority decision. A record now, 8-0, undefeated. Don't question this kid's heart. He got rocked, he came back, Alex. He got rocked, he came back. This is crazy that it started out. I don't think he was expecting it to be as close as it was, but he got it done like the champ should. This is just incredible. How can you keep up with this face? Burgess with that right hand, he managed following up. He was just back and forth. We thought that he was out. He managed picked up that tenacity and grit to continue on and carry on to the semifinals. But boy, oh boy, if this is the type of action that we're getting in just the first in the quarterfinals of the opening Copa Combate, I mean the rest is just awesome. You have to think. Alex, what is he going to have left for round two? That was an incredible fight. You got to go back there and go, okay, you got one more. Deep breath, get back in it. Not yeah. easy. And now we're when he goes to the semifinals, he'll only have one round, so he is going to have to get his bearings together. His face did look a little bit bruised, but he has some toughness. He's a Mexican representing Mexicali. He's going to bounce back. Yeah, I'm curious to know, guys, that's a lot of damage that they took. Yeah. And you know, when you have that transition, Jimmy, if you're in a tournament, right. all that adrenaline is kicked in, then it goes down. To really bring it back up to that level is very difficult, and it doesn't matter how much endurance cardio you have, it really takes a lot from you to follow that up. Your body almost goes into shock, right. and That's you gotta come back yep. for it. Everything right. starts hurting again. The punches, look at the kicks, an advantage for Ramiro Jimenez. Throw the numbers out the window. It was the, the, the punches that did damage. Jimenez with the uppercut and that straight left hand. Burgos threw some great shots, but mostly in round number one. This was a back and forth war. Absolutely unbelievable. Look at the brackets. Ramiro Jimenez 
our first fighter to move on to the semifinals. But oh my God, wow. what he went through in round number one. That's the question, is the bounce back, the fatigue, you cool down, you warm up again, how does his body handle that? He just went to eight, no. This isn't a guy with 20 pro fights, he's an old school guy, he's been through this a million times. Mentally, it's gonna be tough. You know, and that's one thing that we have to factor in, right? Because it's a tournament, you easily pick up three wins here, which adds on to your record, so you can keep an eye on, but man, the damage does, I, I'm, I'm really curious to see how he comes out in that semi-finals. And these two fighters, Mauricio Egeluz, Alexander Schenk, they have to be thinking, how do you follow how, that up? How do I follow that up? I just saw Jimi Hendrix pull a solo. I gotta go second. Are you out of your mind? Mauricio Egeluz, Alexander Schenk. Oh my God, Beatrice, keep us going. Entrando a la jaula, Mauricio Egeluz. There he is, Mauricio Egeluz. A very, very experienced fighter, 10, 7, and 1 out of Santiago, Chile. Looking to represent Chile just like Burgos did in his last fight. Uh, and that's another line here when it comes to uh, this tournament. Some fighters have, you know, 20 or so fights. He's one of the yeah. more experienced ones. Other guys just getting started in their careers. How do you see that experience, Rodolfo, being a factor here? Damn, we just have here the head and just excited. Look, experience is key here, right? Because you've seen them all. You've seen what yeah. each opponent could do, whether it be a, a grappler, whether it be a striker, and he has it. He's faced a lot of tough dudes, making another appearance in La Hala's. Great striking from Egaluz. Great jab, great endurance. Let's see what this is all about. Tends to go to decision a lot. Might be a case of the tortoise and the hare. Beatrice is bringing his opponent. His opponent, Alexander Schenk. Our first fighter to wave the red, white, and blue coming into La Hala, Alexander Schenk. You talk to him, Rodolfo. Yep. And just that youthful enthusiasm, man. He just seems like, man, I'm thrilled to be here, but there's a pitfall. I call them the happy to be here, where you're just kind of happy to be here, and then you realize you're in a tough fight, and, and it's a little bit of a shock. How much of his enthusiasm do you think carries into the opening round? But, I mean, hey, everybody's happy to go to Disney World, right, for the first time until you notice what's inside your pocket and it's all gone. Oh, you look at me in that face. You know what I'm talking about. I know about. exactly okay, what you're talking about. Okay, same thing when I it happens here. Last week. Happy go lucky, but the damage you're about <laughs> to take in that first round because everybody's hungry to win Copa Combate could be detrimental, Alex. But yes, it goes a long way with that good, positive attitude. Yes, and he could really be looking for a quick finish here. Uh, when we looked at Mauricio, he was just an alternate, and now he's in it. So we'll see who's ready to go as soon as that bell rings. Shank, a southpaw, likes that lead kick. Very, very explosive, but has won a fair amount of decisions. He knows how to get it done in a long, difficult, grueling fight. Let us catch our breath, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Combate Global. Mauricio Egeluz in the white on your left. Alexander Schenk, the American, in the blue on the right. The young man full of confidence bouncing around. Well, so is the boss, Campbell McLaren, outside La Jaula. He is excited about everything we've seen so far. The bar, ladies and gentlemen, has been set Ooh. very, very high. Alexander Schenk. By the way, welcome, Alex. I know this is not used to all this energy, but you <laughs> see the young man from racing. America. This is crazy. Take on Mauricio Egeluz, Beatrice. Second fight, get it started. Continuamos con mucha más acción este duelo. En la división peso ligero, we continue with much more action this bout. In the lightweight division, los jueces son the judges are James Lazaro, Elian Rodriguez, Y Vicente Rodríguez. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global.
En la esquina azul, in the blue corner, wearing white, vestido de blanco, su peso oficial, 145 libras, he tipped the scale at 145 pounds, con un récord profesional de 10 victorias, 7 derrotas y un empate, with a pro record of 10 victories, 7 losses and 1 draw. From Santiago de Chile, Chile, Mauricio Eguilu. En la esquina roja, in the red corner, wearing blue, vestido de azul, su peso oficial, 145.4 libras, his official weight, 145.4 pounds, with a pro record, seven victories and two losses, con un record profesional de seis victorias y dos derrotas, de Clarksville, Tennessee, Alexander Pretty Boy Shane. El referee. Christopher Mignocchi. Ok, esta pelea son dos asaltos, only two rounds. Okay. No tiran los codos o los rodillas en cabeza, por favor. No elbows, no knees to the head. Okay. You want to touch gloves, go ahead. Buena suerte a los dos. Or the referee in the tournament, no elbows, no knees. Why? Cuts tend to keep you from going on to the next round. round one, are you ready? Ask that to Ramiro. <laughs> <laughs> we are underway. Round number one. Mauricio Egueluz from Santiago, Chile, in the white. Alexander Schenk representing the United States. He's in the blue. Yeah, this is the second time we see Schenk inside La Hala. Oh, oh, great spinning back kick. Known a lot for his wrestling, but right now what we're seeing is his stand-up game. Just like Egueluz, great striking, great boxing that Mexican boxing style. Yeah, Mauricio getting in there quick. That second degree black belt from Alexander Schenk is gonna be tough. First degree black belt in Taekwondo as well. He has a great spinning kick too from Orthodox and now we're getting to see him work in the clinch. Now this is where Eggy Luce, this is kind of how he wins fights, right? He grinds you down, 10 wins, nine of them decisions. What does that mean? He's used to going the distance. He's used to the long haul. He has the gas to pace a fight very, very effectively. Shank, you know, he wants to stay out of these kind of positions. Exactly, yeah. especially against Mauricio, who is a brown belt, who might get the better of these, but we'll see. Shank is sometimes daring to go in for those takedowns. However, especially in the tournament, as we saw, we don't want to leave it to the judges, guys, because anything could go the opposite way, even though you think that you won the fight. You really gotta go for the kill, especially in the quarterfinals. And also, only two rounds cannot afford to get held against the fence for an entire round. You lose it, you can easily lose the decision giving up just one round. And it's gotta be on the mind right now of Alexander Shank. He's pressed against La Haula, going hard for the throw. Now hunting for the neck. At the same time, though, Aguilus was trying to play it safe. Not taking, neither of these guys so far taking any heavy, hard shots. Good transition by Egelus on the ground, going for the wrestler's ride, trying to put that hook in briefly. Shank trying to break up that grip, push positioning his hip not to be taken down, he sure did. 18 professional fights for Egelus, 10, 7, and 1. Shank only eight fights into his professional career. This is fight number nine. Now this is a position that Alexander Shank found himself in his last fight at APFC5. He got in the rear naked choke position many times, and right now it could be more of a crank. Yeah, both but hooks in though. Up, that could be a problem. Yeah, plenty of people tap to a crank. If it gets deep enough and strong enough. Now when there's $100,000 on the line, guys. You do what you gotta get. <laughs> to You're like, the next level. You can crank my face straight off. Go ahead, rip my hair off, let's go. Go to the body triangle is Egelus. This is not where Shank wanted to be in this fight. He does have that body lock pretty tight, too. His coach telling him, step over, get that foot to the floor. Of course, Egelus reversing the body lock. I always want the lock on top in these positions. Smart for Egelus. So you saw he switched the position of that body lock not to tire his legs. One thing about the body lock, it can be hard to get the rear naked. The person's head is a little bit low. You gotta kind of reach down for the rear naked, but Ege Luz staying busy with this back position. Yeah, what a change of pace from that first <laughs> Boy, oh boy. Absolutely unbelievable. And you know, you just gotta reset if you're in this tournament. I'm not trying to copy what someone else did. Fight my kind of game, and this oh, is Ege Luz's kind of game. this could be trouble there. Very tight with the rear naked. 
And they're not at a point where they're super, super sweaty. So if he gets under the chin there, right. it could be a problem. Absolutely terrible. Angie Luce so far fighting his kind of fight. Alexander Shank looking to get back in. Remember, only two rounds in this quarterfinal round. Only a minute left to go in round number one. A round so far controlled by Mauricio Eguiluz, fighter from Chile. Chile still not out, though Pablo Burgos is out. Chile had two contestants in La Copa Combate, so there's still a chance. And Burgos, though, did his country proud in round number one. A fantastic fight. Oh, oh now good job. And Eguiluz getting Shank flattened out. And still trying to look for that rear naked choke, submission, something in, that could come in the way. Okay, Luz, using that, the, that, that long build, those long legs, long arms, seems like Shank just can't get any space so far in this fight. It's crazy. This is not the game that Shank wanted to play. And he started off really well. He let those kicks fly, and it looked like he was going to have some tough kicks, Ooh. but now escaping. That's right, having somebody on you with those long legs, absolutely miserable. Short shots from Egelus. As I said, 10 wins, nine decisions. He just doesn't go harder than he wants to, right? Lands the short shots, plays the long game. It can oh, be frustrating, oh, oh, but oh, effective. There you go, Nick in 10 seconds. Ah, Good escape. escape by Shank, and he is unloading the final seconds of round number one. Wow. Stop, stop, stop. We are getting ready for round number two. Mauricio Egelus on your screen right now from Chile. Taking on Alexander Shank, the American. Clarksville, Tennessee. Brash, young, confident, but spent all of round number one really on the defensive, mostly on the ground. Egelus fighting his pace of fight in the first round. Yeah, that's what his corner told him, Egelus. He said, hey, man, keep working that distance. You're doing well when you have the opportunity. Go in and grapple him. You're doing exactly what you should do. But Alexander's got to feel pretty good about himself. That's a brown belt that was on his back that wasn't able to finish him in the minutes that he had him there. But we'll see if he's able to get him to the ground again and do the Hector exact same Hector Gar Garcia for all. Alexander Shank did not come here for moral victories. He came here to win $100,000. In order to do that, he has to flip the script in this round number two. But we're kind of starting where we were in round number one. Now, finally, Shank getting just a little bit of distance. How well can he use it, known for his stance switches, his power from the southpaw stance. Now going back to orthodox. And mentally, you need to really certify yourself. You only have two rounds. That is it. So you need to bring everything that you can. Every second counts. Greatest freestyle wrestler of all time, Buva Sayar Saitsev, three-time Olympic gold medalist. I talked with a guy who wrestled with him. I said, what's it like? He said, every time he touches you, he draws you in. He's so strong, even at the end. This is the kind of thing Egan loses. You know, went for that clinch from the, from, from distance. It's like, boom, it just pulls, um, it just pulls Shank in, and he can't get his game going. 100%. And even though Mauricio represents Chile, he moved to Mexico specifically for MMA training, now training at Entrum MMA. We'll see if he's able to get an escape here. A great sweep from the brown belt easy. back on top. X-guard sweeps should not be that easy in MMA. And he pulled it out perfectly. Just to piggyback of that, Alex, you know, he left Chile about two years ago to go train in Mexico. He hasn't been to his home country since then to really make sure that he needs to do what to become that mixed martial artist. So $100,000 will get him back home. You know, Rodolfo, let's talk about that for a sec. You know, in these interviews with these fighters, like, yeah, I haven't seen my family in yeah. two years. I'm going to buy them a home. This changes my whole life. And just the motivation, it's, it's, 
it's almost painful that somebody has to lose, right? As badly as all these fighters want to win. That's what makes this tournament, you know, it, it, it's everything. It's athleticism, it's emotion. I mean, everything is in here. Ege Luce just following his game plan right now to a T. It's almost like exactly what you guys were talking about in the beginning. This is a grappler's way to win. Not taking damage, short shots. I'm going to have plenty of gas for the second round. Don't do anything stupid. And, and in round one, we saw what two strikers right. do, which is just right. beat the brakes off of each other. And you're playing it safe, right? You're conserving your energy, not taking a lot of damage. I'm absolutely shocked that Alexander didn't do more on the feet when he had the chance. That is his bread and butter, but Mauricio coming in with a strong game plan, utilizing his strengths, and it's working out for him. You know, Schenk is coming off a two-fight win streak, one of them being bare knuckle MMA. Yeah. And what I've seen in his previous fights, he starts off with that Taekwondo stance. He didn't do it this time around, though. He's flipped the script here. Easy pass, looking to get around the knee. Smooth. Beautiful step back, right? Exactly. Good job by Shank getting him back in butterfly guard. But minute and a half left, right? You know, Eggy Loose knows I don't have to do much. Stay on top. Don't be stupid. This one's mine. It seems like Alex has about a hundred, uh, a minute and 20 seconds left to get back to his feet and get a knockout at this point, or else it could be going the other way in the judges' eyes. Hail Mary right now, guys, for Schenk. If he wants to win it for the United States again, as there has been one American that did win Copa Combate. Ege Luce so far a master's class when it comes to control, pacing, the ability to put pressure on in the guard. He's using a sweeper's guard right now as Schenk with the butterfly. Hasn't been able to get any space with it at all. Ege Luce giving no light. Fighter from Tennessee. Santiago Chile right now looking to even the score at one and one. Chilean fighter lost in the first fight. Looks like a Chilean fighter might be on his way to victory in the second. You lose trapping him like a Venus fly trap, Jimmy. Not getting anywhere for Schenk. Not much damage, and, and I mean, this is going to play a critical role for Egg no, Take that little yep. break. You're going to be fresh. Yeah, no end. I mean, this has basically been a, 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 a 10 minute grappling match for right. him. Fresh. Keeping the pressure on, not letting up at the end of round number two, a fight that he saw tactically go his way from beginning to end. Stacy, he got out grappled. Frustration on the face of Alexander Shank as he feels that fight slip away. We'll get the official decision when we come back to Combate Global. Second fight of Copa Combate. You see the trophy there. Beatrice will make it official between Mauricio and after two rounds of much more action, this is the final decision. Después de dos vueltas de mucha más acción, esta es la decisión oficial. Los tres jueces entregan tarjetas idénticas de 20 a 18. All three judges turning identical scorecards of 20 to 18. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Todos a favor del ganador por decisión unánime. Desde Chile, Mauricio Egeluz. No surprise, Mauricio Egeluz gets the unanimous decision victory. He moves to 11, 7, and 1. Looks like he just finished training at the local yeah. jiu-jitsu school. Or he just hit, got off the sauna. I don't know, but the guy looks fresh. And there's still life, Chile. Yeah. Chile, you're still in it. So. Go ahead and feel proud of yourselves. Let's take a look at some of the highlight guys. I mean, it was just, frankly, just out grappling Shank. Just making decisions. You're very wise, playing it safe, not taking any damage, Alex. And I, I got to say for Shank, you know, he just wasn't there to find a response to Egalusa's grappling. It, it just didn't have anything to come back with. Yes, the strategy was there for Mauricio. It's got to feel pretty good. In his last fight, he was knocked out, and now he gets to come back to this. Get on to the next round, the semifinals. He's gonna have to take on Ramiro Jimenez. Luckily, he's not nearly as damaged, but man, what a battle it was. Great strategy on his part. 
And when you look at the experience disparity between some of these fighters, this is one where you saw the experience in the hollow. You saw the calmness, you saw the strategy, you saw the technique. The young American could have a bright future ahead of him tonight. The Chilean Ege Luce with the victory on the ground. He moves on to the semi-final round. Talk about using your style, using your build effectively. Ege Luce pitched a shutout, 57 punches to eight kicks. Those were shanks, but they were on the feet, and this fight didn't take place on the feet for very, very long. That surprised you a little bit, did it not, Alex? Yes, it definitely did, but again, the execution of of that strategy by Mauricio, now it takes him against Maria, Ramiro Jimenez in the semifinals, but we have a whole, whole other side of the bracket to get to as oh well. Oh my God, a whole other side, but man, that striker versus Ooh. grappler we have in the first semifinal bracket, that's gonna be absolutely incredible. But we are just getting started. We roll on again, 145 pounds. Don't go anywhere. It has been a contrast in style so far. That continues. Manuel Exposito versus Tommy Garcia, perhaps the best grappler and takedown of this tournament. How will he do? Beatrice, let's find out. Entrando a la jaula, Manuel Exposito. There's Manuel Exposito, outworked last time by Lozado Deran. When I saw that fight, uh, first loss of his career, I think this is the kind of fight you go back to the gym and you're pissed because he just got outworked. He started out strong, got outworked late by a superior wrestler, great wrestler from Cuba. And you go back and you've got, I didn't work hard enough. It's the kind you bounce back really strong from. He's going to need that tonight. What are your thoughts, Alex? This is going to be his first time at featherweight as well. So who knows if when he was at bantamweight, he was feeling a little bit more drained. He could be coming into this with a little bit more energy, and that's definitely going to be needed with 100K on the line. Yeah, this dude has a sick stand-up, but he went to a really sick Lazaro de Ron. Phenomenal wrestling, but he came out short, but he did well enough to sustain and continue. Walking in very, very calm. His opponent, let's see his demeanor. Beatrice, bring him in. Su oponente, Tommy Garcia. Saw some excellent grappling in our last fight, right? We saw it from uh, we saw it from uh, Mauricio Egeluz last time out. But I would say right now with the bracket, the way it looks, Tommy Garcia is the only one I would define necessarily as a wrestler. He goes in right. there looking right. for the takedown. Good transitions, slick on the ground. What do you uh, what do you think about his style and essentially taking on a fighter who just fell to a Cuban wrestler? What are your thoughts on this one? But the difference though between their own, right? Who's strictly I mean his, his wrestling is just tip top shape, top of the line. But this dude has some really flashiness with the striking, right? So he can bring that to the table. But he need all those short stockies. The stocky dude could bring you down and out wrestle you. And something they're really in the Dominican Republic, when you look at some of the Dominicans, they're known for that striking. But Team Mordan, where he trains out of they're training everything here for to make that well-rounded fighter. Very, very slick, as you said, representing the Dominican Republic, making his combate debut. He has fought for some big organizations, but his first time in combate. We'll get it on as soon as we come back. And our tournament rolls on. That's right, Manuel Exposito versus Tommy Garcia. Both very, very young. Exposito, 23 years old. Tommy Garcia, just four years older. Slight height advantage for Exposito. Reach almost identical. Beatrice Callas, get us started. Continuamos con mucha más acción. Esta es la pelea de cuarto de finales. We continue with much more action. This is our quarterfinal bout of the evening. División Peso Ligero, Lightweight Division. Los jueces son de Georges R. Richard Green Sr., James Lázaro, and Elian Rodríguez. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Y 
Introducing the blue corner en la esquina azul, wearing blue, vestido de azul. Su peso oficial, 145.4 libras, es official weight, 145.4 pounds, con un récord profesional de 10 victorias y solo una derrota. With a pro record of 10 victories, only one defeat. From Alta Gracia, Córdoba de Argentina, Manuel Expósito. Introducing the red corner in the esquina roja, wearing black, vestido de negro. Su peso oficial, 145 libras, his official weight, 145 pounds. Con un record profesional de 7 victorias y 2 derrotas. With a pro record of 7 victories and 2 losses. De Santo Domingo, República Dominicana. Tommy La Salsa García. El referí, Raúl Porrata. for round number one, Manuel Esposito on your left. Taking on Tommy Garcia on your right. Esposito in the blue trunks. Garcia in the black trunks. It's a battle between the Argentinian ska and the salsa from the Dominican Republic, guys. You know, and, and in the tournament, anything can happen. You're expected that Tommy is that wrestler, but he might just flip the script and go straight down to the striking. Anything can happen. Exposito reaching for the takedown early. Good counter from Tommy Garcia. Thinking about Exposito, I can't believe he fought at 135 pounds. He's a big 45. Big dude, yeah, man. He has some powerful head kicks. Watch out for those things, but you're coming handy if you want to finish off your opponent very early on in this tourney. And before Tommy Garcia was signed up for this event, he was actually trying to call out David Martinez in the bantamweight division. So he's a natural bantamweight. He didn't have to cut much weight for this 145 Copa Combate, but we'll be able to see if he uses that wrestling. He's a highly decorated wrestler in the Dominican Republic. And if he can mix in those punches and get a takedown, he could definitely control. And that's an important name that you mentioned, Alex and Jimmy, because yeah. I'm sure the Black Spartan is watching this tournament <laughs> very closely, because... Like he said, what? <laughs> One of these guys could uh, be his next opponent. And right now, they're worried about each other. Exposito right now working that over-under, pushing. Tommy Garcia can spend a lot of grappling so far in this fight. Both guys willing to engage. Nobody really committing to the takedown with their hips yet. And on cue, Exposito drops. Great counter from Tommy Garcia. Yeah, I like that first quarter final. Both of these two quarter finals that we've seen. A lot more slow paced, a lot of grappling, clinch work. We'll see if Tommy Garcia is able to work anything off that underhook. Right now, happy with just the knees. Oh, what an inside trip. As back and forth they go, the fighter from Argentina taking on the fighter from the Dominican Republic. Tommy Garcia in the black making his combate debut. Manuel Exposito has been here before. An outside trip doesn't finish. Good and job from Tommy Garcia, ending up on top. Oh. Too high in the ride, as they say. Didn't put the hooks in when he could have. Your way of breaking up that grip. But right there and then is Tommy. And you have to imagine Tommy, we're looking at him as more of the wrestler and, Man and Manuel more as the grappler. So maybe in those floor exchanges, Tommy's not feeling as confident. And maybe that's why he's not trying to, you know, show his submission grappling game off. I'm saying I, I see his stand up, his guard of Tommy Garcia, very, very old school, traditional boxing stance, you know, not just tight with the, with the elbows in, very loose. And neither fighter having their way with the other physically. Right? Usually these are guys that impose their physical will and it's a back and forth battle, even in these clinch positions. Considering the fact that Manuel is moving up from bantamweight and 
Tommy is the natural bantamweight. I think this is a great job by the matchmakers. We're really seeing them kind of almost cancel each other's styles out. Yeah. yeah very true. Tommy Garcia going for the one, two. Exposito. Yeah, that's that high kick I was kick. mentioning, guys. I mean, good way of Exposito is exactly what you need to do, especially when you're taking out that fighter with that type of stance to work that jab, follow up with that right hand. But you have to be careful because that so Tommy's wrestling, grappling. He has great timing on those takedowns. Tommy yes. Garcia's birthday is on Sunday, too. So if he's going home with 100K, that's quite the birthday hey. present. <laughs> Better than a piece of cake. You can really <laughs> celebrate with that. Really celebrate with $100,000. And Raul Parata uh, separating the action. And very rare. We're going in there, breaking it up. Tommy Garcia backpedaling just a bit. And a close round. Exposito in the light blue trunks is been the aggressor throughout. That might be enough to get him the nod in round number one, but we'll have to see. Nice straight left, who might finish strong. Coming up on 30 seconds left to go in round number one. Yeah, well, Exposito definitely learned a lot from that fight with Aaron. He came in and he was undefeated, so taking in a top-notch wrestler just changes and knows where you need to fix your holes. And he's fighting out, fighting out this first round strong so far. Finishing tough is the fighter from Argentina on your right. It's definitely very entertaining to see Manuel switch stances, really making Tommy Garcia stay on his toes here. Under 10 seconds left to go. Round number one. Who has the gas to finish strong in round number two? Welcome back to the second and final round. Don't hear that very often. Manuel Exposito from Argentina in the light blue trunks, taking on Tommy Garcia from the Dominican Republic in the black. We are in the middle of the Copa Combate tournament. One bracket has been filled in the quarterfinals. And there's no open scoring, but were you leaning any which way on this on that oh, last round? Right now, definitely leaning, leaning Exposito in round number one. Oh! oh, oh, oh. might not be any need you for know, judges after this. Another right oh, hand, Tommy he's Garcia. He's woozy, guys. Up he's and woozy. It's over. Referee, stop the fight. And there is some serious protest from oh. Exposito. Thought that was a little premature. Exposito was rocked. He was moving backward. He was woozy, but man. Absolutely unbelievable disappointment on the face of Manuel Exposito. Let's take a look here. That fast pace, and it was that right hand, was it? That down that, a hit, clop, clop, and Exposito. Yeah, yep. there it is. Boom, straight down. One, two. You're going to see him right there. One to one knee, he's going to fall. Right there, he lost his footing, a little wobbly. But he wasn't really out. It's more like he lost his. It yeah. almost like his silence, right? He did bounce up very, very quickly. Yeah, he wasn't out. I mean, slightly premature from a referee. I understand what he was looking at. He was looking at that last fall when he twists and falls to one knee, but he bounces right back he up here. right back up. Yep. I mean, there's no doubt he was seeing Tweety Bird, but he was still in it. He was seeing Tweety Bird and his opponent. <laughs> so that's, that, that's combined, but we'll make it official when we come back to Combate Global. It's been an unbelievable opening round for that. That's right, Copa Combate. Incredible performance from Tommy Garcia. Let's make it official. El tiempo oficial. 33 segundos del round numero dos, the official time. 33 seconds of round number two. And the winner, by technical knockout, el ganador. 
por nocaut técnico. ¡De sangre dominicana! ¡Tommy García! Tommy García moved to 8 and 2. We talked about his wrestling. But it was his power from the stand-up that led to that TKO in yeah. round number two. Unbelievable. Well, you can see Exposito here a little disappointed due to that referee stoppage. Tommy Garcia using that wrestling deal. We didn't need it because it was that KO that knocked out his opponent, Exposito, from Argentina. I can see why Exposito is a little bit disappointed. And you'll see the replay here that he does beat. He's taking down but he quickly gets back up on his feet. But Exposito in that first round, guys, I mean, it was all him, right? He, he had that round, I would say, and in that second is when he encountered that right hand that took him down and referee stepped in. But part of it, you know, was this lack of respect. You see me coming, ate a couple right hands, yeah. didn't respect the power, went no. right back into right there, a big shot. It was a one-two shot combination, followed up with a third one, but he quickly right back up. He was still in it. I'm, I'm not saying that he wasn't dazed. He, he probably was. was, right? He was seeing a little blurriness, but he was able to overcome. And look, if you get your opponent in your clinch, you're able to recover and, 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 and continue on. But hey. The Safety stats, first. The stats don't really tell the story here. You see right here, 12 to 9 in punches. Tom Garcia uh, uh, landed two kicks to, to Exposito's four. But it was the power in that second round, right? It's the ones that matter that really was the difference. Tom Garcia moves on. Not just that. He moves on with KO in round number two. Saved himself some damage. Yes, he did save himself a lot of damage. Que lo que la República Dominicana, they are cheering for him at home right now. And he has the potential to match up against Nico Barna or Jimmy Morales. And we have one more quarterfinal to go. If the others have been any indication, buckle up and get ready. Welcome back to Combate Global. It is our last quarterfinal fight of the evening. Nicolas Barna versus Leonardo Morales. Both fighters looking for their spot in the semifinal. It has been a night full of action, and it looks to continue. As we see these two gentlemen face to face, what could be going through their heads? Well, let's bring him into the jaula. Entrando a la jaula, Nicolás Barna. Rodolfo, we were talking about this young man before we uh, before we started, before we got on air today, and we talked about stocky, strong, built like an absolute pit bull, and tenacious with his takedown. Doesn't like a lot of setup. Doesn't like to throw a lot of strikes. It's get in there, clinch, drag you to the ground, and make it brutal on the mat. That's what he's great at. And that's a good recipe to go up against a Jimmy Morales who's experienced because he tends to have some challenges with wrestlers. But hence, that's what they call him the mini hope. He's the type of guy that he sits there in the stands, will try to flinch, but won't throw anything. But once he finds the right timing, he'll go in either for the clinch or go for the takedown and just drain you and wrestle you and grapple you until you can't get out of this position, Alex. And look, we've seen it here already in this tournament. Yeah. You need to protect yourselves so you can continue on, Alex. And you may have the key here to defeat a veteran. Yeah, he's definitely looking to come out unscathed, but against someone like Leonardo Morales, it's gonna be a tough one. But Nico Barno is definitely there to get it done tonight. It's a contrast in styles. Let's get it started. Su oponente, Leonardo Morales. Now, I don't want to point anybody out here. I don't want to, you know, call out maybe Rodolfo Roman, who said this, this is a guy that he was looking at from the beginning, and it's that experience factor, not just the style, but the experience of Jimmy Morales. What are your thoughts on him in this tournament? 
he's definitely the dark horse coming in. People might look at his record and say, oh, this guy can't do it, but he has that Nicaraguan grit, and he's gonna come out with that southpaw stance, and he generates so much power from his left side, it could be fatal. Look, Alexis Arguello, right, one of the best boxers of all time. That's one man that he looks up to. And Jimmy Morales, the last time we saw this man, La Jaula, defeated, right, this phenom, right, undefeated from Chile. Yep. Jose Ferreira, they underestimated him. And it was a head kick, a head kick. And even when protecting himself, knocked out Jose Ferreira. He's coming out the momentum the last time he saw in La Jaula. That plays a major role. But again, he has a tough challenge against the mini Hulk because his opponent has a lot of stuff that Jimmy Morales doesn't do well against. Welcome back to Combate Global, Nicolas Barna on your left. Leonardo, Jimmy Morales on your right. The final quarter final fight and the tension in here palpable. One more spot left in the semifinals. How do these fighters up? How do these fighters match up head to head? 31 years old for Leonardo Morales. He is three years older. He's also four inches taller. Also, a five and a half inch reach advantage. Will the striker use it? Beatrice, get it going. Continuamos con mucha más acción este duelo. En la división peso ligero, we continue with much more action this bout. In the lightweight division, los jueces son the judges are Vicente Rodriguez. Richard Green Sr. and James Lazaro. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. En la esquina azul, in the blue corner, wearing black, vestido de negro, su peso oficial, 146 libras, his official weight, 146 pounds, con un record profesional de 8 victorias y 3 derrotas, with a pro record of 8 victories and 3 losses. From Montevideo, Uruguay, Nicolás Minijo Barna. En la esquina roja, in the red corner, wearing blue, vestido de azul, su peso oficial, 145.8 libras, his official weight, 145.8 pounds, con un record profesional de 13 victorias y 9 derrotas, with a pro record of 13 victories and 9 losses. De Managua, Nicaragua, via Phoenix, Arizona, Leonardo Jimmy Mora. El referí, Christopher Mignocchi. Vamos. Ok, nada más tenemos dos asaltos. No tiran los codos o los rodillas a la cabeza. Si quieres tocar guantes otra vez, puede. Buena suerte a los dos. Uruguay versus Nicaragua. A la jaula, por favor. Nicolas Barna from Uruguay. He's in the black trunks. Leonardo Chimi Morales. He's in the blue. We're underway. Round number one, our last quarterfinal fight of the evening. Like how Jimmy Wright is coming out a little low here Ooh. on his stance. Known for that kickboxing, that head kick, the knockdown, Jose Ferreira. Good striking, fast hands. But Barna really doesn't throw. He just waits for the right moment until he takes you down. If he's able to take down Jimmy, it could be a very tough position for the Nicaraguan. Right now, you can see them kind of Woo. figuring out that rhythm of each other. No matter where Leonardo's back leg is coming from, whether it's your inside leg, a head kick, or body, it's going to hurt. So that southpaw position against Orthodox right now is going to open up a lot of different things. And in this type of tournament, since you only have two rounds, that whole feeling out process, it's almost like you got to just take it out the window. Oh! Those opposite stances that body kick of Chimi Morales, it targets the liver on the right side, and that'll stop a fight instantly if it lands. And Great he's throwing kick. it with reckless abandon. Beautiful, he has to keep that distance away from that, that wrestler of 
his opponent, but great jab, great striking so far to keep him away. And starting to see a little bit more feints from the hips from Chimmy. He's also using his Ooh. backhand as a distraction, so Miko doesn't know what's coming next. That's right. Going out of the southpaw stance is Leonardo Chimmy Morales and, 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 and Barna. Yeah, he won't, he won't no. counter, Chimmy. He will not counter. You're correct. When we were breaking down, you know, the, the weaknesses of these fighters. See, the problem with Barna is he, he doesn't throw, throw enough hands to set up that takedown. And he doesn't have those long legs like Chimmy's with those kicks. Chimmy doing a great way of bringing down that stance, landing in that inside kick. And Nico Barna, a purple belt, who won his last fight by decision, which is what punched his ticket into this tournament tonight. And Chimmy Morales right now not looking for a ground battle. Looking to keep this one at Ooh. distance with those long, those long power tools on the left side. Power hey, punch and power kick. Look at that. Right Beautiful there, looking for that. Even if it doesn't land, Alex, it lets you know this is in my back pocket. You put that hand down, I'm going to make you pay. Exactly. And that's the exact kick that knocked out Jose Ferreira, Tiro yep. Loco, the undefeated fighter back then. Now only one loss to Jimmy Morales. And Jimmy's not using those kicks for setups, guys. He's, no. he's doing it for a KO. So far, kind of heavy footed, right? Planting his legs and then bang, turning over that kick. As you said, no setup. Yeah, putting all that weight in that, as soon as he turns that hip. No light teeps, no question mark kicks. This is about the power shot. Straight for the kill. Yep. And he just looks so calm out there. It kind of has to do with the heavy footedness, like you said. He's just walking him down and waiting for his moment. Also, also not taking on a guy, I think that, that that I hate to say it, but he respects right now. Nicholas Barna hasn't thrown the punch to get the respect of Chimmy Morales. Hasn't backed him off. Hasn't given him any reason to do anything but what you're saying, Alex, which is, oh, you know, land the big shot. Look at that rib area of Barna, all red on the right hand on the right side. Oh, yeah. I want you to point that out. Jimmy is playing. Jimmy is playing a very start to the great teep there to the gut as well. So far, everything going the way of the fighter from Nicaragua. And when Nico got the call for this tournament, he was actually still celebrating the win of his of his past one. So we'll see if he's able to get it together. He had to get a quick training to get together, and now he has a tough opponent in Jimmy Morales. As you say, sometimes Woo. you gotta sell out to get the grappling going. You gotta take those one or two punches, walk yeah. through the fire, and right now, Barna looking like he's realized, look, I'm not gonna take this guy down from the outside, gotta get in. Now he's throwing in a one-two combination. He's reacting towards to it, but Jimmy, good way of protecting himself, keeping them hands up. And even if he, if, if Nico tries to go for any feints, Jimmy just counters with heavy hands. We're under a minute now, and it's at the point where Nico just has to try for something. Oh, no! And every time, Jimmy Morales, even when he lands something big, what does he do, Rodolfo? He resets. Doesn't go crazy for the finish. Resets, goes back to the center, goes back to work. Oh. That's what Just happens. chopping got, him down, boys and girls. That's what happens. You've had 22 fights under your belt. You don't get overly excited. You go right back to work. What I like for Jimmy is like he, he just knows when that jab of Nico is coming. Just swats it away. Good job now playing to the legs, working the head to the toes. Now Jimmy up in his stance instead of coming in low. Jimmy's starting that to play right with now. a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he's having Mocking fun with it now. Right. He's having fun now. Because he knows he's getting him with the kicks. There's no fun to be had so far for Nicolas Barna, the fighter from Uruguay. Having some trouble right now with the striker from Nicaragua. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Breathe. Good, good job. Good move. Keep moving. Work at the bottom and the and the body. Good job. Alright. Can can fight us. Just keep going. Good, good, good. Yeah, as you see, guys, that, that was the difference in this fight. Those head kicks, beautiful. As we've said, when your corner doesn't have a whole lot to say, things are going pretty well. And that was a lot of good, good, keep doing that. Sticking to the strategy. Yep. Boy, if we get Jimenez and this dude with those kicks. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo.
I don't, I don't want to jinx anybody, but boy. By the way, Rodolfo Roman just got to his feet and is pacing oh, around. I've been. I've for been. this fight to start. I have pacing been. around like a caged yeah, animal. Yeah, you're not going to have me seated here and watching this tournament. Way, round number two. What is this? Is this Hollywood movie? Leonardo Chimimo. The Morales, tournament, Jimmy. The blue shorts on versus Nicolas Barna in the black. Barna, the grappler, Ooh. unable to get his game going in round number one. Jimmy Morales having his way so far on the feet. One thing that the corner didn't say to Chimi Morales, which I found a little surprising, is, uh -huh. hey, don't expect this guy to be passive in round two. You beat the brakes off in round one, great, good for you. You want a cookie? He's not going to come out and do the same thing in round number oh. two. Yeah, you, can't sleep, you yeah. can't sleep on your opponent, especially yeah. in a tournament. Well, I do, I do Chimmy's here on the right foot a little limping. Looks like he's limping Maybe, maybe in that teep? Could be the teep, or he just... Kicked the cup. The I mean, cup, hurt yeah. his foot slightly. Yeah, it could be his toe. Yep. And back to the action. And he's back in it, though. Ah, uh, uh, stop them. Great. Beautiful job stopping the takedown uh, of Nicholas Barna. Both guys changing levels at the same time. Just rammed into one another. And Leonardo Morales having the wherewithal to stay on top. Nicholas Barna going with that butterfly guard. Great way of stopping the wrestler of Barna. And great way of keeping him down. And again, the strategy here, Chimmy could go all in and try to get the finish, or he could think about how that last round went and just go for control time here. Obviously, we want to see as much action as we can get, but he's going to have another two matches after this. What do we say? Mama didn't raise no fools. I didn't come in here to get to lose something stupid in the second round because I wanted to do a lot. Right now, he's playing with the safe strategy, staying heavy in half guard. Barna was briefly in butterfly guard, sweeper's guard. He's now in stuck in half guard, but nothing he can really get his offense going from. Here you go, Barna having that lockdown, Whoa. trying to work up to dogfight, but again, Jimmy able to keep him down. Yeah, briefly thought about a Darce choke there. Briefly thought about it, but there he it was, able to pop his head out. Yeah, re recharged. Moving on the side. That's the problem with that position. When you pummel in that underhook, Pone goes underneath. They have long arms. You're in Dars country. All right, good away. Maybe we get the mount here nice. from Chimmy. Out grappling the grappler is Chimmy Morales. Shows he's been putting in that work at the UKF in Arizona. You know, I must say that this is pretty impressive stuff from Chimmy because we've seen him in the past. When he goes to the ground, he has some challenges, but here he's doing a phenomenal job. I hate to give you credit, but Rodolfo, you did say Chimmy Morales, somebody to keep your eyes on in this tournament. So far, he's lived up to those words. You said that you like the wrestlers too, so now he's going to have to go up against a wrestler if he comes out with the win with this one against. Yeah, hey, I'm not Tom saying Garcia. anything. I just said what I said. <laughs> <laughs> But I am neutral as the day is long. We see right on top of Leonardo. Chimi Morales staying patient in half guard. Nicholas Barna finally able to get this, this, this fight to the floor, but hasn't been able to accomplish anything. it has been stuck on bottom under two minutes left in round number two. Remember, they are only two round fights. The commission will only allow so many rounds. The yeah, referee just gave him a warning that both men need to work, but I see both both men being active. Maybe the crowd here and the referees a little spoiled by the action we've seen in other fights. But Jimmy Morales back to his feet. Nicholas Barna needs to find a way in big time with a minute and 20 left. And let's see if Nico can time one of those kicks, catch it, get a takedown, and be able to work a little bit more of his game. Ooh, or what we thought was his game. There. I think Barna almost attempted to go for the knee there, nearly got caught. Needs to be careful, he's still got a minute left. Nicholas Barna expect a frantic pace under a minute left. The fight he is behind, being controlled by Leonardo Chimi Morales. Very experienced, 22 professional fights. He's the most experienced fighter in this tournament. So far, it has shown Barna trying to roll for the knee bar. Nothing happening there. 
Jimmy Morales will not let off when it comes to the pressure. Nicholas Barna forced to fight from his back throughout round number two. Is Jimmy doing a great, wonderful job in putting the brakes on Barna? In fighting, in grappling, you know when to go, you know when to stop. Leonardo Morales has used his energy expertly throughout this fight. Ooh. Great job finishing with some big punches. Nicholas Barna back to his feet. What can he do with it? Jimmy Morales finishes with a flurry. Copa Combate, you see it there, goes to one fighter. Last fight of the quarterfinals is over, but who won it? After two rounds of much more action, this is the final decision. Después de dos vueltas de mucha más acción, esta es la decisión oficial. Los tres jueces entregan tarjetas idénticas de 20 a 18. All three judges turn in identical scorecards of 20 to 18. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Todos a favor del ganador. Por decisión unánime. De Nicaragua, Leonardo Chibi Morales. No surprise at all, Leonardo Chibi Morales striking in round number one, grappling in round number two. He controlled this one from start to finish the 14th win of his professional career. A little bit of a limp. Hopefully that isn't a problem in the next round because this one, Rodolfo, was a banger. It, it sure wasn't, and I hope he does recover. I saw the doctors checking on that right knee. We don't have any official word. But look, you put on a perfect performance here against a grappler, Alex, and to finish off the way he did so confident with a smile, but I don't know about the right knee. They even asked him, hey, if you're able to come for the final decision, do so. If not, stay on the stool. I don't know, guys. It's uh, not looking good from what I saw there. He was definitely the fighter tonight that came out with the most confidence. He was having fun out there, smiling, almost playing with his with his prey a little bit, and, and really, you know, getting the job done there. Yeah, you saw the stats. It was one-sided, but now, we have our semi-final bracket set. Leonardo Chimi Morales will take on a Tommy Garcia. Ramiro Jimenez, who went to war in the quarterfinals, will take on Mauricio Egeluz, who won a one-sided grappling battle. So, now we have our semi-final set. This is what I'd love to do, Alex. I'd love to put Rodolfo on the spot. I'm gonna do it again, but I'm gonna start with you. What is your fighter of the night in the quarterfinals? My fighter of the night was gonna go to Leonardo, but after that limp, I don't know if he can be my favorite anymore. I gotta give it to Tommy Garcia, who got the finish. He managed, man. He went in there with grit, tenacity, brought everything. Let's see what he's all about in the next time around. It was a great night of fights, but it was just the quarterfinals. Next time out, our semifinals for everyone behind the scenes, and the boss, Campbell McLaren, have a great night. <laughs>